you don't have a right triangle, you pretty much can't use all the trig stuff I taught you. However, there are some things you can do to this triangle to either break it into right triangles or uh, construct a... So in this case, this is, I think we call it a cute triangle because it has all angles less than right angles. So if you have an acute triangle, you can break it into two right triangles like this. So you can always cut it up very carefully. Now, it's easier done than, or it's easier drawn than actually done. You have to be careful about, well, what angle is that and what angle is that? And then how do these two side lengths compare to the original? So there are the price you have to pay, which is, you know, how big are the sides that we just sliced it into? We did this once with one triangle way back in week one, I believe, and we cut the bottom side in half, exactly. So we avoided the hard part of this because we cut the side in half and therefore cut the angle in half. So we did this in a very special, nice, easy case. So here's one way to handle a non-right triangle if it's acute. And what if it is obtuse, which means, obviously, if you have two angles bigger than 90 degrees or bigger than pi over 2, you don't have a triangle. So obtuse means you got one angle bigger than 90 degrees. So that triangle could look something like this. And here, you technically could do the same trick we just did. You could drop a, I think they call this dropping a perpendicular down. So you could do it this way on the really big obtuse angle, but that's just like what we did a second ago. So the other thing you can do on an obtuse is you can extend a side and then drop your perpendicular down. And this is a little bit strange because now you really have two triangles, neither of which was your original. So what are your two triangles? You got this really big right triangle and you have a small right triangle right here. So there's really two triangles hiding out. Uh, they will share their, uh, let's call it the height maybe, or the, I'll just call it H is bad. I'm thinking hypot hypotenuse when I see H. I'll just call it Y, how about that? They share the Y side right there. Uh, over here in the original, if I call that Y, the Y side, they'll also share their Y side here. So you get triangles and the angles are related. For example, if you take the big angle minus the small angle, you will get your original angle right there. So if we just look very carefully, big angle minus the small angle gets me the original one right there. So you should have gone through a lot of this stuff in your geometry class, so I'm gonna skip, this is not really about geometrical construction, so I'm gonna skip that part. Uh, and I'm just gonna give you the law of sines. So the law of sines works on triangles that are not, it works on every triangle, but specifically use it on non-right triangles. So that's where the law of sines is useful. If you have a right triangle, you're wasting your time with the law of sines. You better just go with right triangle trigonometry, you'll get there way faster. So this was a little sidebar, some, a fun trip through geometry land. So you could use geometry, but what we're going to do instead is go with uh, non-right triangle trig. So this is geometry for non-right triangle trig. So we're not going to do the geometry uh, method. We're going to go with law of sines instead. And this is It'll work on every triangle, but you're gonna get there much faster if you use your right triangle trigonometry on right triangles. So this is law of sines. This works on all triangles. This is actually relatively easy to write down. Sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And where do A, B, and C come from? So you have a triangle. We're using, obviously, the capital letters are angles because sine, cosine, uh, sine is eating the capital A, B, and C. So those are angles. 
So we'll just go A, B, C. Now little a, b, and c are the sides that are on the opposite. Now capital C and little c probably look almost the same unless you write them right next to each other. So you see a big one and a little one. So just be aware of that. You should be able to tell which is which when you use them in an equation because your angle is going to be input for sine. And the side is going to be obviously not the input for sine. All right, so there's law of sines. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve some triangles here. And just to review, that means find all sides, all angles. We'll go to degrees. We'll go A is 40 degrees, angle B is 60 degrees, and side A is going to be 4. So we can draw a triangle out. When we draw this triangle, you can go ahead and draw it pretty close to being equilateral. Again, these are not equilateral triangles. I just don't want to spend the time to... You could very carefully measure 40 degrees, 60 degrees, Try to draw out your triangle with 40 and a 60 and whatever the other angle is, but I'm going to just do a very rough sketch not to scale. So every triangle I sketch here is not to scale intentionally. Now A, we'll go A, 40 right there, so that'll be angle A, angle B, 60, that's B side A, is going to be opposite angle A. So let's get uh, angle C. How do I get angle C? It's not 90 degrees. Or at least it better not be. No, it won't be 90 degrees. How do I get angle C? So where does, where does the Pythagorean theorem work? It works on some triangles. Right triangles. So if we have a right triangle, Pythagorean theorem is great for getting a third side. Yeah, so we're going to do the angle sum. So we've got three angles add to 180. So A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees. And we know A and B. So 40 plus 60 plus C equals 180. And you can tell right away C Angle C, whoa, is 100, not 180. So it is 80. Whew. Is that right? 40 plus 60 plus 80 is 180. Yeah, so angle C is 80 degrees. So any questions getting to that? Now, unfortunately, I don't know sine of any of these. Well, oh, I do know sine of 60 degrees. So I can't get sine 60, but that's the only one I actually know about. All the other ones, I could get an approximation using a calculator, but I can't really figure out you know, sine of 40 exactly. Uh, you might be able to do some very clever addition, subtraction, half angle stuff to get there. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything, but I'm sure we could probably get some some way to get there if we add and subtract it and divide it by two enough times. But I think that would be more pain than it would be worth. So let's just write sine 60. That's easy. All right, sine 60, square root 3 over 2. So we need side B, and we need side C. So we need side B, side C. So how can I use? side B, uh, side B, angle B, and then side A, angle A, I'm going to use law of sines now. So we got sine A over A equals sine B over B. So we're going to use the first two here. All 
And we know sine b is 60 degrees. So that's square root 3 over 2. Sine a is sine 40 degrees over 4. So I basically filled in every value I know about here. And I want to know what is b. So we could cross multiply or reciprocate both sides and then get that fraction out of there, however you want to do it. Go ahead and solve for b right now. I'll give you 30 seconds to get there. It's just multiplication division is all you need to do, but carefully, obviously. Now, if you have a calculator, you can get a decimal approximation for the side length right here. So anybody has a calculator can type this in quickly. We'll get some decimal for this. And we'll, while we're getting that number, let's start on the next. So I need to know what is C. So I definitely need sine C over C. And let's compare that to A. Let's go with A and A, because if I go with B and B, side B is really ugly. So I'm going to stick with A and A right here instead. So we're going to use the approximate equal sign, the squiggly equals for that. That seems pretty reasonable. Is that what you got over there? That says error, so. Oh, 4.522 sounds better. <laughs> All right. Now, how do we see, see if this is reasonable? Uh, basically, with triangles, if your angle's bigger, generally the opposite side's a little bigger. So the angle 40 had a side length of 4, angle 60, the, side, the opposite side length should be a little bigger. And now our 80 degree side, so I lined up sine C over C equals sine A over A, and just plugged in 80 for uh, angle C, 40 for angle A, and 4 for side A, and we can just reciprocate everything. And multiply by sine 40, or sine 80. If I was using sine of B, I, I could go with that. Sine B and side B. But I decided not to do B only because uh, I'd have to use this side that we just got right there. Oh, I was meaning for the first one. So basically get the decimal for sine 40 degrees? Yeah. So you do a square root of three over two. I mean, you have that uh, sign of sixty over two. Yeah, I mean, square root three over two is sine sixty. Yeah. So yeah, you could have left it sine sixty if you wanted to. Yeah. 
So it would have been, yeah, if you, if you wrote it like that, it would be 4 sine 60 over sine 40 like that would have been um, B right there. Okay, so there is a lot of signs on that first example. We'll do a, another one right now. So we're going to start with uh, some information about a triangle. And on this one, we got side A is 3, side B is 2, and angle A 40 degrees. So how do I start finding, so what is the first either angle or side I should look for? So I know both the A's. We're looking for the B we don't know, so angle B. So go ahead and set that up. We want angle B, side B related to angle A, side A. So we want to figure out what is angle B. So we're first solving for sine B. So algebraically, this is really not terribly difficult to solve for angle B. Uh, of course, to get that actual value, we're going to need to really use a calculator again. This one's a little more tricky because you have to go sine inverse of all this stuff on the inside. Uh, I think if you're doing Wolfram, you can just leave it like arc sine of all this crazy stuff, and it would be good enough. What's that? So we'll go approximately, let's say just say 25 degrees. That sounds nice. All right, we could, to get angle C, we can go angle sum right now if we wanted to. So for angle C, we could say it will be 180 degrees minus A minus B. So this is just the A, B, C, A plus B plus C is 180. I just subtracted the two, the A and the B to the other side. And minus 40 minus, uh, yeah, let's use those decimal. Well, we'll just leave it at 25 and pretend that this is, uh, this will make C obviously approximate, not exact. They do this in science all the time and nobody cares. Oh uh, boy, what is that? 115? All right, so that's angle B. Angle C, how do I now get side C?
So we just need to relate side C to angle C, and then we either go back to A's or B's. I'd like to, B has already been approximated, so let's go back to A's instead of go back to B's. So we knew the exact A uh, side and the exact A angle. So let's relate C's back to A's. So we're using the exact ones. Now, any time that you replace an exact value by an approximate, you're no, you'll no longer have an equation, you have an approximation. So our equal sign just turned into squiggle equals. And then solve for C, reciprocate, or multiply and divide. Degrees, ooh, we said A, side A is three. Drop a three in there. So I do make fun of science, everything is approximate, but if you've ever done anything in real life, even if you go and buy uh, two by fours at even a really good lumber yard, are they exactly, well, Two by four is a bad example because they're not two inches by four inches, but they're also not eight foot long. Every two by four is a slightly different length. They're not all eight feet exactly. So you line them up and you may, they may look close, but if you measured close enough, you'd find that they were off by some number of nanometers or whatever small measurement you could use. Um, also, if the temperature changes, the wood's going to shrink or grow by some nanometers as well. Or if it gets wet, or if it gets dry, or if you drop it. So everything is really an approximation in real life, even though I make fun of uh, science measurements. So only in math do you actually use equal sign and mean it. It doesn't actually mean equals anywhere else.